I am Rodrigo Duterte. I'm a Filipino. I love the Philippines because it is the land of my birth. It is the home of my people. Transport authorities filed a plunder complaint against top officials of the previous administration of Noy Noy Aquino, including key Liberal Party stalwarts. Our Rex Remitio gives us the reason for the filing of the case. A grand conspiracy to steal billions of pesos in taxpayers' money at the expense of Metro Rail Transit commuters. That's how the Transportation Department describes what high-ranking officials of the Aquino administration did. This is actually in response to the public clamor and cry for accountability uh, for the dismal state of our train system, specifically the MRT3. The DOTR filed a plunder complaint before the Ombudsman against nine secretaries in the cabinet of former President Aquino. The main culprits, former Transportation Secretary Jun Abaya and his predecessor Marrojas. Both are stalwarts of Aquino's Liberal Party. The other cabinet officials are accused of tolerating the acts of Abaya and Rojas. Also included in the complaint are 10 other former transportation officials. 10 officials of the Busan Universal Rail, the SAC maintenance provider of MRT3. And Marlo de la Cruz who is said to be connected to the LP and with both former maintenance providers, PH Trams and Global APT. Buo sila, kaya conspiracy ho ito. Bila sa conspiracy, sa act of one is a act of all. In the complaint, the DOTR says Abaya and Rojas used the MRT3 project to acquire ill-gotten wealth. They say it was also a bottomless cash cow for the party. The complaint claims Abaya terminated former MRT maintenance contractor Sumitomo despite its good record and replaced it with the dummy corporation, PH Trams Joint Venture. Abaya entered into a 500 million peso contract with PH Trams without public bidding. One year and a half, I suggest to the Department of Transportation that they stop looking for scapegoats and start looking for solutions. Up to this point, MRT is still uh, such, uh, in such a state that it does not serve the purpose for which it was formed. Uh, I'm confident that. Uh, Secretary Abaya et al. can uh, respond to the charges. Uh, just uh, one basic uh, issue. The uh, blunder requires or is an element of the crime is that you personally profited and uh, to the extent of 50 million pesos. I don't even think that there is, uh, that there is an allegation that this, this, this respondent uh, profited personally to get to the extent. So again, I will... PH Trams is apparently not registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. When the anomaly was exposed, Abaya and his officials abruptly replaced PH Trams with Global APT. Again, with no public bidding for an almost 700 million peso contract. Instead, it used the aging rail tracks from Light Rail Transit 2 for MRT3. The DOTR says this caused the consecutive broken rail failures of the MRT and led to the derailment of a train in the Edsa Taf Avenue station that injured three dozen passengers. Officials say all these happened because of the deliberate inaction of former transport officials. The DOTR also blames Abaya and other respondents for the wasteful purchase of light rail vehicles from Dalian and signaling systems from Bombardier Transportation. These deliberate mistakes culminated in the contract with Busan Universal Rail. Although the company is not technically, legally and financially capable to operate the project. For the past eight months, from the start of the contract of Buri, binayaran ho nilang Buri buwan every month by 54 million. Wala hong deduction yun. Abaya and his team failed to submit the required documents for the payments under the law. Since the amount is above 50 million pesos, which the DOTR says is tantamount to plunder. Rex Remitio, CNN, Philippines. CNN Philippines tried to reach out to the former officials mentioned in the complaint. Former Transport Chief Jun Abaya believes he will be vindicated from what he calls unfounded allegations. Former Interior Secretary Marojas is out of the country. And former Public Works Chief Babe Singson has, says he has yet to receive the complaint and can't comment. Former Finance Secretary Cesar Purisima is surprised he's even included in the complaint and believes the allegations have no basis. 
Malacanang is optimistic the Ombudsman will prioritize the investigation into the plunder cases filed against officials of the Aquino administration. Presidential spokesman Harry Roque says they hope the Ombudsman will consider the inconveniences experienced by MRT riders because of the supposed incompetence of the previous contractor. We must stress that the great suffering of the riding public as a result of the failure to deliver on the responsibilities of public um, office, such as a case of the current state of the MR33 system, carries consequences, and that those accountable will be held liable. Despite repeated warnings from the House Justice Committee, Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno is firm. She is not attending the impeachment hearing against her. Sereno is instead sending her lawyers to represent her in all stages of the impeachment proceedings. The committee will determine tomorrow whether there is probable cause to impeach the Chief Justice. In the letter to the committee, Sereno's lawyer stressed it is a violation of due process if she is denied of her right to be represented by her lawyers. Sereno also sent the committee a special power of attorney authorizing her lawyers to cross-examine the witnesses against her. Uh, hindi ito kapricho yung hindi pagpunta dito ni Chief Justice, yung pagpapadala niya sa kanyang mga abogado. Ito ay consistent lamang sa kung ano yung binib, uh, nakasaad sa mga alituntunin, sa House Rules on Impeachment at maging sa ating saligang batas. House Justice Committee Chairman Reynaldo Omali stressed only resource persons and not their lawyers are allowed to speak during congressional hearings. He warned if the Chief Justice does not appear, the allegations against her will not be disputed. CNN Philippines spoke with House Justice Committee Chairman Ray Omali. He says the reason why lawmakers are insisting on the Chief Justice's appearance is because lawyers cannot speak as a resource person according to the rules. Facing the committee is an option that is given to the respondent. And uh, while the uh, rules provide for uh, cross-examination, this is uh, not done by lawyers because uh, as a general rule, no lawyers can speak for a resource person. And so in this particular case, uh, those rules apply and therefore if it is uh, to be considered based on existing rules. The lawyers will not be allowed to speak for and on behalf of the uh, respondent. President Duterte reiterates his tough stance against the communist movement. The president issued a warning to the country's mining companies that government will shut down their operations if they pay revolutionary taxes to the Communist Party of the Philippines. Here's the president in his own words. All mining companies are paying taxes to the NPA. Without exception yan. At hindi magta-tribe yung mining nila kung yun nagbibigay ng pera yan. So we have to decide once and for all. If I go against uh, the NPAs, the communists, well, everybody has to reconfigure your relationship with the NPA. Because if you continue to support financially, they will close you down. The president also reiterated his declaration to tag the CPP-NPA as a terror group. He said in jest that since the left has constantly labeled him as an amboy or American boy, the president said he will categorize the communist movement along with the Abu Sayyaf and ISIS, something the U.S. did years back. He will also seek to stop negotiations with the National Democratic Front, which represents the CPP NPA in the peace talks. Subsequently, he wants all suspected rebel leaders freed last year to join in the talks to be re-arrested through the orders of the judiciary. The president was speaking at the opening of an art exhibit in Taguig City dedicated to soldiers and policemen who fought for the liberation of Marawi. The Philippine Army says it still has to validate reports that foreigners are allegedly fighting alongside members of a local ISIS-inspired group in Maguindanao. In Pagadian City, four fishermen recently rescued by the military from the Abu Sayyaf group are now back home. Our Menchu Makapagal has the stories from the regions. Colonel Jerry Besana, Civil Military Operations Chief of the 6th ID, said they are still gathering information about the three foreigners who were spotted in Carmen, North Cotabato, with a group led by former Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighter Commander Abu Toraife. 
Torayfes group has been fighting against the joint government and MILF forces in Maguindanao for the past months. Dozens have been killed and wounded. Relatives of the two policemen abducted by communist rebels in Placer, Surigao del Norte, are seeking help for the victim's release. The families of abducted police officers John Paul Duverte and Alfredo de Gamon Jr. said they trust a group of so-called third-party facilitators who have successfully negotiated with the New People's Army in releasing kidnapped policemen and soldiers. The policemen were abducted on November 13 while manning an outpost in the town. Four of the five fishermen kidnapped by suspected Abu Sayyaf members last month are finally home in Pagadian City after government troops rescued them in Tawi-Tawi. The victims were kidnapped on October 14 in the waters of Sulu by three armed men who later turned them over to the Abu Sayyaf group. Pagadian City Mayor Romeo Pulmones pledged to extend financial assistance to the four fishermen. Menchu Makapagal, CNN Philippines. President Duterte says he may order the lifting of the moratorium on oil exploration in the West Philippine Sea. Speaking to reporters, he says this is a possibility following an agreement with China announced during Chinese Premier Li Keqiang's recent official visit to the country. The agreement calls for cooperation in exploring oil in the disputed South China Sea. It's one of the possibilities that will happen or can happen or will happen in the South China Sea. I will uh, only lift it when uh, I think the higher interest of the Philippines is served. It's unclear when the moratorium will be lifted. The government suspended oil exploration work in what the country calls Recto Bank in the South China Sea in 2015. This was done pending an arbitration case against China. The International Tribunal eventually ruled in favor of the country. Families won't have to spend too much for a Christmas feast this year. The Trade Department says only premium brands slightly raise their prices on their Noche Buena offerings. That's for items like Christmas ham, cheese, fruit cocktails, spaghetti and sauce. While prices for items like mayonnaise, sandwich bread and queso de bola remain unchanged. All in all, officials say prices of Noche Buena items have stayed the same. In fact, they're even selling below their suggested retail price. Still, officials encourage buyers to be wise with money, try out new brands, and look for promos to score discounts. The important thing here is, may choices yung consumer. So, pwede silang pumili pa rin ng presyo at yung brand na gusto nila. What balances it up, like I said, is everybody's aftermarket share by the end of the year. All these manufacturers. So, look for all those promotions, tie-ups, and uh, price discounts. Napakarami nun. Heads up motorcycle rider starting tomorrow, November 22, the MMDA will strictly implement the blue lane policy for motorcycles. That means motorcycles can only ply the fourth lane of EDSA from the sidewalk. Violators will be slapped with a 500 peso fine. Authorities continue to strictly implement the yellow lane policy, which mandates public utility vehicles to use only the two outermost lanes of EDSA. As of 12 noon today, the MMDA has apprehended a total of 442 vehicles. Around 60% of them are private cars. Most violations were caught through the no-contact apprehension or via the CCTV monitors of the MMDA. Kumpirmadong buntis na ang dating sexy star na si Elena Darna na naging kontrobersyal matapos ma-involve sa presidential son na si Baste Duterte. Ngunit ipinagbubuntis ni Ellen ang kanilang magiging anak ni John Lloyd Cruz na kanyang kasamahan sa ABS-CBN sitcom na Home Sweetie Home. Nang galing umano ang kumpirmasyon mula mismo kay Ellen nang ipagtapat ito sa kanyang malalapit na kaibigan na nagdadalang tao na siya. Sinabi pa umano ng dating sexy star na Maselan ang kanyang pagbubuntis kung kaya't ingat na ingat ito ngayon. Dahil medyo Maselan ang pagbubuntis nito kung kaya't napaaga ang kanilang uwi ni John Lloyd mula sa pagbabakasyon sa Europe. Ang pagbubuntis din umano ni Ellen ang daylan kung kaya't hindi ito nakasipot sa ginanap na Ben sa fashion show noong isang araw lamang. Lalo pa ngang lumamigang simoy ng hangin dito sa Tagaytay habang papalapit na ang Kapaskuhan pero hindi ito naging dahilan para humupa ang isyo, ang init ng isyo sa pagbubuntis nitong si Ellen Adarna. Samantala nangako naman ang dalawa, si Ellen at saka si John Lloyd, na kanilang aalagaan ang kanilang magiging anak. Si John Lloyd ay 34 anyos habang si Ellen naman ay 29 anyos. Para sa NBC Network News, Rocky DZRH News, naglilingkod sa pagbabalita.
O ito para naman sa mga tagyawatin dyan at ang problema dahil sa kanilang butas-butas na muka. Nako, worry no more dahil alam nyo ba na ang acne scars pala ay maaaring matanggal? Kung paano, alamin natin mula sa Experts Opinion Report ni Dennis Antinor Jr. Isa ka ba sa mga taong G na G o gigil na gigil sa inyong mga taghawat? Kaya madalas mong tinitiris at kalaunan ay nagiging peklat. Natatakot ka ba dahil nagkakabaku-baku ang inyong mukha, kakatiris ng iyong pimpol, na minsan ay nagdudulot pa ng kawalan ng confidence sa sarili? Pues, worry no more! Dahil ayon sa mga dalubhasa, may mga mabisa pa rin paraan para unti-unting maghilo ang inyong peklat dulot ng taghihawat. Batay sa pag-aaral, ang acne scars ay ang mga naiwang namumula, nagnanana o namamatang tagyawat na pumupunit sa follicle wall. Paalala ng mga dalubhasa, hindi sapat ang pagpahid ng kung ano-anong mamahaling produkto para lang malinis ang inyong acne scars dahil hindi na manaabot ang deep dermis na nagpuproduce ng collagen para maalis ang peklat sa mukha. Mas okay pa umano ang microneedling o ang pagtutusok-tusok sa balat gamit ang karayom ng pixel pen o di kaya naman ay derma roller. Epektibong paraan daw ito para ma-stimulate ang produksyon ng collagen para tulungan ng balat na mawala ang peklat. Payo ng doktor, iwasan ang nakaugaliang paglagay ng bawang sa acne scars dahil makakairitate lang ito sa mukha.